Okay, here's the real T.Y. Danielle, it was the first ever triple eviction in Woo! Big Brother history. We've oh, got two man. decades of shows, and it finally happened. <laughs> finally happened. We got what a did triple you think of the eviction. Show? Um, I liked it. I okay. thought it was pretty fast paced. It was um, it's quite intense. I was like, good Lord, I am so glad I'm not playing that season because mm -hmm. that was a lot of work. <laughs> well, by the end of, of the episode, we saw the players just laying out on the floor. Especially, and well, they had been through the ringer in that well, two hours. Well, Dad, <laughs> Grandpa Memphis, we were like, whew, <laughs> I'm tired. He needed like some Bengay and some heat pads. His back was hurting, boy. <laughs> now, did it bother you that the challenges sort of were the same over and over throughout the night? I think, I'm going to just say for a female perspective, it, it does, um, it's kind of hard because I'm short. I'm only five foot four. So, you know, when someone's a little taller, they can actually cover more room on mm -hmm. challenges like that, unless you're super speedy Gonzalez. So I, it didn't bother me that the challenges were over and over again. I like challenges when they have to dig for like, you know, the infamous Jeff clown shoe incident, you know. <laughs> or Kevin Martin and uh, Big Brother Canada, who had to dig and win those, those shapes through the triple eviction. I like those challenges because it's so intense, but I, it didn't really bother me. But I, I kept thinking like, you know, trying to carry those things. And if you're like a Nicole and you're petite yeah. and you, you take smaller steps, I, I just don't see um, a girl winning it, but she was pretty close because her puzzle was incorrect and Kristen yeah. did win one, but that's yeah, just so me. Yeah, we got a lot to break down because right. it was basically three weeks that we went through in just the two hour episode on Thursday I was night. I was exhausted. We yeah. began with the eviction. And of course, we had Kevin and David on the block. Were you right. surprised how things turned out Thursday night with the first of three evictions? Uh, no, I was not um, surprised. I kind of knew Kevin was not going to last this week if he didn't win a POV. It was just evident that he was on his way out. Um, he lived he too many lives. He was the target. Lives. He was Cody, the HOH's target. And the only reason why he's Cody's main target was because uh, Miss Donato and other people told Cody that Kevin didn't like him. So naturally, it, 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 Cody, before that conversation even happened. Yeah, that feels like that sealed the deal. It kind of, well, it, it, it did seal the deal. It didn't make it better. Um, it did, um, it was eye-opening on how Kevin will vote if he's a juror. Um, mm. That is something that, you know, Cody could have just probably could have handled it a little better um, and explained to Kevin, you know, why he's doing what he's doing. Um, because when you tell a person, hey, you know, people are telling me you saying bad stuff about me. What am I, what am I supposed to think? A person can argue that. You right. can't argue that. So, you know, again, you got to, if you, if you do things in a game and you back it up with receipts or logic thinking, the person can argue that. It's no. just, it's, that's it, right? So. Well, the votes came in. Yep. It was round one on Thursday night and round one. everyone voted to evict Kevin. Enzo, yes. Danny, Tyler, Christmas, Nicole, and Memphis. Right. They were unanimous. And it was kind of scary because Kevin David, out. well, David, won, you remember David took that ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I didn't have no problem with David taking that. No, no, he heard he was, Will. Doctor Will told him, "Yeah, sometimes you got to take the money." You know what? David probably looked at uh, what he was dealing with, and you know what, David, take the money. <laughs> I, I have no problem with that. And people are like, oh, I run, can't run. Are you run? run and take the money he took the money because look he was you know take the money i don't care yeah it was a tough situation for him we know uh so david survived kevin walked out of that house and we got to ask some questions to kevin the first thing that we wanted to discuss was that goodbye message from danny danny donato revealed the larger alliance and so right. we asked kevin if you could have had your own large alliance in the house who would be in it, and, and if he even suspected that whole thing. Right, right. I think at this point, everyone knew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's no secret. No. When Danny revealed to me that she was a part of this larger alliance, I totally, I, I totally knew this. Um, I knew there was a larger alliance. I knew that she was a, closely connected. That's why it was so hard for me to have conversations with her, because I, I didn't want to be like, 
I'm going to reveal something that this larger alliance would get mad at because everybody would communicate notes to each other. So um, wasn't super surprised. And if I had a chance to form a alliance to kind of counteract that, it would have been with like Janelle, Kaser, Bailey, Devon, David, maybe even Enzo in there. Um, you know, something like that. But we, and Nicole A, um, if we, if she could have stayed, but we couldn't get our stuff together. And unfortunately we couldn't win competitions to formalize have a, a moment of power so we could formalize conversations. And as a result, it was just a bunch of individuals trying to figure out how to survive, not ultimately coming together. Tragic. Well, yes, Kevin, it was tragic. <laughs> tragic. Ooh. It was a tragic, it was a train wreck, sir. Um, here's the thing, you know, regardless if they knew of the large alliances, the fact that they were like freaking cheap and voted with that large alliance every week, no one took a stand, which mm -hmm. really infuriates me. You guys had an opportunity to make some changes or take a stand with Janelle's and the Casers and the Nicoles, and you guys chose not to do it. And yes, Kevin, you guys had to win comps and you guys did not win comps and that was it. And Kevin, you went and told Danny about you guys wanting to um, flip the vote for um, the tie for Ian. So you blew it right there when you told Danny you guys gonna, she made Nicole, um, Nasal Nicole, I can't remember her last name, Fra Frazzle, Frazzle. Frazzle. Okay, you, you told, and then, so that's, that set it in stone. So you, 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 you opened your mouth, sir. I mean, if you knew Danny was in it, it was too late because you spread the, you, you spilled the tea. But I don't think at that point they really understood there was this huge alliance. And even though they thought some people were working together, they didn't realize that it was this beast with the tentacles that spread out everywhere. And that information he was giving was just going back to the head of the beast. I mean, it's just the voting, Jason, it's just every week, they just voted unanimously. And yeah. it was just disgusting to watch. I, I hate to use that word, yeah. but it's just That's like, a strong word, Danny. It's, just, it's disgusting. As a player and as a fan of the show, why weren't they not standing up and voting the way they want to, regardless mm -hmm. of the situation? For the optics? Well, the optics is now, now you're sitting out there in the jury. Mm -hmm. And now fans are like, you're not really playing for yourself. You lose respect. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is this is the way I feel. I'm sorry. I know I'm a little hard. A little tough love. A little tough, a little tough love. love. But it just makes me mad. To vote the way you want to vote. I think Go it's vote. frustrating to all of us watching the show. We want to see people play the game. These are all stars. And right. if you just go with the house and don't look at your game, do what the HOH wants, do that's not HOH. playing. In my opinion, playing. like no. the All-Stars should play. You play, yeah. Ugh, I'm so mad. <laughs> I love it. This season's, I mean, it's been a roller coaster. It's, we're crying, we're mad, we're this. We're doing everything. And you know what? It's so weird because Kevin went from his original season never getting nominated. Yeah. And I always said, if Kevin made it to that final, he was winning that game. Well, and, and he, he said that in the episode. And then he gets there, he's been voted week at the week at the week at the week. There's something wrong here, y'all. It's just like, come on, people. Don't you think, too, that really shook his game? That made it a tough game for Kevin, that he constantly was trying to survive the block. Week after week after week, this was such a different experience, I would imagine, for him. It's a little disrespectful for him because if you're a pawn so many times, that means people don't respect you as a player. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, we'll just keep him because he's weak, and we'll just sit him up there, and, and then we'll get somebody else later. It, it, so it's just... I just wish I, it's hard because those people in the jury did not have a chance to really make any moves with the exception of Davon winning that POV and taking Kevin off. Yeah. Right? So yeah. That's, that's hard. It's not like they didn't even have a chance to play, really. You're sitting in the jury for being on the bench, basically. You're a bench warmer. You're like your team goes to the championship, your team wins, loses the championship and you didn't have a chance to contribute to the team at all. Right. So it's like, you, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what they were sort of saying by benching them and then just booting them one by one. One by one. I, I, I will say in all fairness to the players who were evicted, initially they didn't suspect this big thing. And we talked about that, why Kevin gave information to Danny. But once they started figuring out, hey, these two people are working together and these two people are working together, maybe 
all of those people are working together or something, then they really should have flipped votes, change what the HOH wants to do. And even without winning competitions, they could have steered a few things differently with those evictions. Do you, you still, disagree? You still, I, I don't disagree. You still have power with the votes. Yeah. And you could do votes so close you can blame other people for votes, which Danny did. It's just like... <laughs> If Danny HOH, and, and Nicole with that yeah. whole hinky vote that hinky blew up vote. for David's game. You could have, they could have done so many things to cause dissension. Yeah. That's the key word. You need to cause dissension and chaos, but they chose to go with, they were a herd mentality and it just bothers me so much, Jason. Well, that's one of the things on season three, <laughs> I really appreciate it. And as somebody who likes just peace and calm and all of that, you'd stir it up with some hinky votes and you'd get some <laughs> things going and we would evict the person the house guest wanted to stay and it would create chaos. And I, while their heads are spinning, we're doing yeah. other things in the game. We're doing it. We're sitting back going, ooh, y'all see that? And you just watch and eat the popcorn like, oh, it's about to <laughs> it's get up. Good. It's getting good up in her. Yes, I love that stuff. I mean, you I gotta think create my favorite, the chaos in the midst of that game. But the it infamous keeps everybody blind, off kilter. Yeah, and my favorite. A lot of people don't know my favorite infamous blindside, with the exception of the Golden Beetle, was the Tanya and Josh. Because the look on Josh's face when he, because he thought he was going home, and you and I flipped the script and we sent Tanya home. Woo! <laughs> Well, he didn't know what to do. That, I mean, he went, oh, he couldn't believe it. Even jo when Julie announced, I think he said, Tanya or Josh, you're safe. I, I think she actually said, Josh, yeah, she, you're safe. She may have flipped it. She flipped the script, and I think he was shocked. So he was to getting me, up. Oh, what? What? I'm still here? And I was like, -ha 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 -ha. I loved it. <laughs> so I, I, I just think they missed a lot of opportunities um, in this game, and it's so frustrating. Uh, watching this season. I, I will say because of the pregame that we suspect and it feels like different house guests have confirmed that really made it tough for anybody to break into this because even as people watch the live feeds they're trying to figure out some of the connections and relationships that these house guests have and they're not even revealing it what they set up and the connections that they have and the trust they have for each other they're really not talking a whole lot in the game an occasional here or there we're now just seeing, and we'll talk a little bit about this toward the end, uh, some of the connections and some of the ties, and that's pregame, in my opinion. It, it, but it's and that so, gives nobody who's in the game playing it a chance. <laughs> I mean, everyone pregamed in All-Star 1. Everyone pregamed, with I the guess. exception of Howie and myself, Jason. But yeah. here's the thing. You kind of can connect the dots. You know, Nicole and Danny are close. You know, Nicole and Cody's close. You know, probably, I mean, it, it, it's so easy to connect the dots. I don't know what, I mean, come on, people. It's that house, though. It's a vortex. <laughs> and they were all telling people misinformation, that big committee group. And that's why people went, well, it's just me with a hunch. And I've heard from this person and that person and this person and that person and this person and that person. And they all told me that it's not the case. It's hard to get out of you know the, what you think is a bunch of people telling you the truth and what's in your head. You just but, feel like you're crazy and paranoid. Jason, it's Big <laughs> Brother. Everyone lies. And I, think I know. What, I think but what, you forget you that I, after a little time. You get lulled into it. Yeah, but you sit back and you watch. The one thing about you and I, we, will, we always looked at human behavior interaction, mm -hmm. right? So if anyone's telling you something, they're telling you something for their own personal game. They right. are what Marcellus will say, working their own agenda, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to, even if they're giving you some information, you have to take a second, like, why are you giving me this information? How does this benefit you? Right. Right? And you just grin and you go, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you wait and you watch the dynamics of the house. <laughs> and then use yeah. that information when it suits you. Human behavior, the way people act, really is a huge tell, yeah. quite frankly. All right, we got to get back to Kevin. We're asking him if anyone changed his jury vote mm. when they gave those goodbye messages. And we asked what quality he's looking for in the winner. But when he yeah. goes to cast that vote, who he is looking to give half a million dollars to on finale mm. night. Mm. The goodbye messages for me 
really don't change my mind on things because everyone in the house knows that it's a moment to convince a jury member to vote for them. So therefore it's very disingenuous, like disingenuous, like it doesn't come across to me as like a real moment. So I don't think that it will really sway me. My What will influence my vote is my unique experience in the house from my perspective, from when I woke up to when I went to sleep, not these key moments of like one conversation or a, a, a competition. It's going to be like whenever I woke up and went to the bathroom, was somebody like dodging not to look at me or did they make eye contact with me and, and gave me an opportunity to respect me as a person? Um, were they uh, suddenly nice to me when, when they needed something from me or were they consistently nice to me? So there's this personal element that I'll, I'll really, really factor into it. Um, and then the other part too is I want to really honor the game. I want to know the, the level of gameplay that occurred. Was, it, was this a type of person that was just um, hiding in a larger group um, or using this sort of dominating majority culture? I'm not a fan of majority culture. I'm not a fan of when domination occurs. So that alone sh is not going to impress me. I want to know what individual moves did that person make. Um, and, and I want to know how were they big and significant. So... As I told people in the past, respect, right? Yeah. And it's, you and I always said that it's how you have to re be respectful of the game and all the players. And, uh, you know, when a person says, oh, I miss you and I love you and blah, 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 and a goodbye, no one cares about that. It's all, you're trying to get my vote. But how you treat yeah. that player in the game is so crucial. Um, so that is telling because that tells me clearly he's not going to vote for Cody. He's right. clearly probably not going to vote for like if Danny uh, makes it to the final two. So it, it was, it was quite telling. You know, here's something though that I think is interesting that he talked about the personal and he talked about gameplay. Could he, if there is a, a Cody, I don't know somebody else who he felt didn't respect him in the game sitting there in that other final two chair. And mm -hmm. then does he have to go, well, both of these people I had zero personal relationship with. I don't want to give either of them my vote, but I have to vote for somebody. And then he just looks at game. Is that sort of the, what he was saying for second criteria for how he's going to use his vote? Right. And I think it's telling in regards to, especially if he said the person was hiding in a large alliance, mm. AKA hint, Nicole. Nicole. Um, so that's exactly um, who I thought about. I know. Right. I was like, mm, I just like, Ugh. that's why I said drag her all the way to the final two. But, um, but so is, uh, is that Cody's game? Is he going to do this? Is he, I don't know. I, I you know, it's going to be interesting because Kevin, when he voted last time, he had that relationship with Natalie. When you go up third, you kind of not, you're so, you have to make a decision quickly on voting. Um, versus you had time to marinate and I mean, duh, you're going to vote for me, but I'm just saying when you, when you go up third, you kind of just like, uh, I think I should vote this way. Cause there's a lot going on. So um, I don't know. I don't know who's going to win this game. All I know, the only person that has been genuine and respectful to every house guest in that house, when they have one-on-one -on -one conversation is Enzo. He's the That's going to go a one. long way. That's going to go a makes long it into way. the finals. And he's going to be like, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that is it. So let's see how this, this pans out. I'm curious. <laughs> okay, let's get to the next question we had for Kevin. We talked a little bit about that Cody conversation, and we asked him <laughs> why. Even prior to speaking to Cody, he may have felt Cody was entitled. And right. was that or another moment the turning point for your game, Kevin? Watch this. Um, okay. Oh God. Okay. I'm starting to realize what's being aired. So like, take, give me a moment. Um, okay. So, okay. Here's the real tea why I felt like Cody felt entitled. He, he was making it feel like it was my responsibility to have conversations with him prior to him being HOH. Basically I, he was like, how come you never talked to me? And I was like, how come you never talked to me? Like, why is it my responsibility to come talk to you when you're not HOH? It is a mutual agreement. And to me, that's just coming from a place of, place of privilege where it's like, well, you know, you know, you're, you should, you should come to me. And I'm like, that's very, very, very privileged. Like you should look at it like we're equals. Um, and so, and there was many moments of that where um, I can just tell, like, he's like, well, 
I smiled at you and said good morning this to you. You should be happy that I did that. And I'm like, eh, like that's what you think kind of wins me over. Like that's that's not enough. You know what I'm saying? Like I think he thought that I should be satisfied with the morsels he's giving me, and um, and I, I really didn't respond well to that. You know, he was really trying to make me feel bad that he had to nominate me. Like it was my fault. And I'm like, no. So according to Kevin there, he felt like Cody put him in this situation sort of saying, you're the reason you got nominated. That's rough. It's rough, but it was facts because Kevin was talking bad about Cody. And it, it goes two ways. As, as Kevin just said, I'm going to vote for people who are genuine and have their respectful to me, right? But in the game of Big Brother, you, it's a social game. So mm -hmm. you have to try to break that wall with that person and have conversations with them. If you're sitting in that house for a week and you don't hardly talk to one person, you need to make that effort to have a conversation with that person. And it, it, it's, it's harder for players to understand that concept. Cody was right and Kevin was right too. They both were at fault because now one person may not get a jury vote and the other person got kicked out. So both of those two, those two men have no one to blame but themselves. And I will say this, Cody should know better because Derek did that when he won. Cody didn't have that many relationships where Derek always made the extra effort to talk to everyone. Mm -hmm. Spend in time with Victoria, spend in time with Donnie, you know, all, you know, Frankie. He, Derek did a better social game. Even Cody acknowledged that. I'm going to try to have a better social game this time. So Cody's just as much as a fault as Kevin in this situation. All right. Do you feel that he, what did he say? The T and Y? What, what is that? Jason. He said, I'm going to give you the T and Y. Oh, the T and Y. I, just, the tea. I thought it was something like a thank you or a... Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm you trying to educate early. him. We were doing this, Danny. Get, get, <laughs> I need trying. some more coffee in here. I'm trying yeah, to educate Yeah, if you hear the clanking, yeah. that's me sipping more coffee, <laughs> trying to lean in off camera. All right, it's early. <laughs> we know it was a long eviction night on Thursday. And then uh, one of the other things that we asked Kevin here, we got to get given those four questions. Right. After the eviction, you mentioned how much you love the game of Big Brother. And I still feel like he does. Of Julie course. wanted to, to know these kinds of things. We want to know, Kevin, would you play the game again? And if you did, who would be <laughs> on your wish list? to play Aww. in the future. He's probably going to say Dave Vaughn. <laughs> you know, being a huge, being a fan of Big Brother and being casted on the show is like obsessed. And then being called for All Stars is like lightning striking twice. And I can't even, I still can't even, is this really happening? Am I, am I, am I in a coma right now? Um, and so I'm just so uh, grateful for this experience. And, um, I think if I were to be asked again, I, just like when they called me the first time, my immediate instinctual response was yes. I didn't even hesitate. And then I was like, oh God, I should probably have a conversation with the husband. And um, so the, the reality is instinctually because I love uh, this experience and I love how each time it can be unique. Now I'm uh, realizing that you can play Big Brother one time and have one experience and you can play it another time and have a completely different experience. And because of that, I would be really receptive to playing it again because I'm curious to know how would it be totally different. And I would, and I, I would love to play with any sort of mix of cast. Now I, I kind of played with my, my wish list people. Like I, I just would really wanted to play with Devon. I was like, oh my God, there's Devon. Nicole was there. Um, I was really excited to see both Nicole's actually. So. Um, now that I kind of realized that, okay, you can play with your obsessions, um, I would be receptive to playing pe with people who are, you know, um, I, would, I, I wouldn't even consider playing with, if that makes sense. Sure, that makes sense. And Danny, I think you can talk about this because I've never played a second season, Big Brother 3, 1 and done. But it's a different experience playing season three and the All-Stars first season for you, right? Right. It was, um, I told people anytime I talked about Big Brother for the, when I played the first time, I had so much fun. I never laughed. 
and cried and it was such a good experience regardless of the outcome mm -hmm. but i really enjoyed us acting like a bunch of goofballs <laughs> But when I played All Stars, I think because oh. we know what to expect, so it becomes a little mundane and boring, and I, I didn't have any control in the game, which that affects a person too. If you're not doing well in a game, it, it kind of taints, you know. But yeah. as any play, any professional athlete or player, you know, when you don't do well, you look forward to the next season because you want to play again, and that's all it comes down to, right? So yeah. I, I think I, I can understand where he's coming from. Um, I think, Jason, if, you know, when they do call us for the legend season, and when you do say yes, um, I think you and I will have so much fun okay. that we just wouldn't care. And I think, um, I think for you, you'll, even when you play in the second time, I think just you and I just being together and acting like a bunch of goofballs and kind mm -hmm. of playing the game, I just really think it would be fun because – you just like, I've been there, done that. Let's have some fun, right? So I, I, all right. I think that was my biggest concern about going back for an all-star season is you know, they, they reach out for all-stars that first time. And I just thought the experience on Big Brother 3 was so amazing and it was amazing. so much fun. That was lightning in a bottle. You can't recapture that. And I didn't want to have that ruined. If I went back, I felt like for some reason this might ruin or taint the Big Brother experience because it was so great for me. And so I think that was the, the fear or the trepidation or something that kept yeah. me from, from doing it. You know, plus, I was starting into a career path and it right. uh, turned, out, turned it was, out great. Turned out pretty good, if you ask <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. I was like, oh, I think I'm going to start this TV news but, job soon. This isn't going to be a good summer for me. I mean, you're doing pretty good. But yeah, here's here I the am. thing. 15, almost all, 15 it, years later, yeah. And congrats. I think Thanks, you've been Amy. totally blessed with, um, I think you and I have done well. Yeah, um, I was going to say the same thing for you. Congratulations. I mean, yeah. People don't know all about your life and success, but yeah, I, mean, I think, I think more done, than professionally though, Danny, just to look at your family, you are yeah. personally so very blessed. Yeah. We, you and I, we, we, we didn't win the game, but we won so much more. Our mm -hmm. friendship and our family and our careers, we were just doing really well. But I will say this in all stars one, I think every day we will sit back in those backyards and look at each other and go, why are we here? <laughs> I mean, because it, it was one of those things we were just like, why are we here? And we just like, Ugh, why are we here? And we knew the fans were upset. And I, I tell anyone, I did not enjoy playing All Stars, but when I watched it, it was such a great season, mm -hmm. great season to watch. So I, I, I'll tell anybody, it was awful. I, I, it was, I was absolutely miserable in that house, but it was, when I watched it on TV, it was so good. So good. That's fascinating. All right. Well, we're going to dive more into Triple Eviction Night in the next episode. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts because there will be another episode and another episode because and we another have one. two more people getting booted. It's going to get good. Now, we're giving some spoilers here. If you haven't seen the Thursday night episode, get caught up before we have those eviction interviews. But we have the next two house guests coming up in the next two episodes. And as Julie said... It was a night, and I think the first time in All-Star Season 2, she said, expect the unexpected. Yeah. That is surely what's happening here when we continue the secret but, alliance. But I have to say something very important, though. Okay. I, I really have to do this. There is a Cass Sinclair. She's from California, and she is turning 16. And I would like to personally wish her a sweet 16 birthday. So, Cass, this is going to be a great year for you. It's going to be I your best you. yet. Happy birthday. Happy Cass. birthday, Cass. Sinclair with love, Danielle Reyes. And oh, I like the birthday. Bye. Dance it out. Dance it out. <laughs> All Girl, right. you better work Kevin, it. thanks for better talking to us. It. That was awesome. All, All right. right. Now to the jury house for him. We've got two more. We'll see you. All right. Secret Alliance. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>